The concrete industry is focused on reducing its emissions, with the aim to produce carbon-neutral concrete by 2050, but have been making efforts to improve environmental performance and implement sustainable practices for decades of operations in the province of British Columbia and across Canada. Many know that cement, the key binding ingredient in concrete, is the biggest contributor to the carbon footprint of a concrete mix. But there are other areas where concrete producers can take action to reduce emissions. Beyond raw material use, the transportation of aggregates is among the largest sources of greenhouse gas emissions for concrete production, largely due to trucking distances between an aggregate quarry and the concrete facility. New aggregate reserves are becoming increasingly difficult to permit over time and moving further away from urban centers, making it challenging to reduce emissions related to transportation of these natural resources. In regions like Greater Vancouver, that are rich in water resources, however, water-based transportation of aggregates can provide an alternative to trucking that also comes with a reduction in carbon intensity. In fact, water-based transportation is roughly an order of magnitude less carbon intensive than heavy truck transport, and offers significant carbon reductions for a concrete operation that consumes nearly two metric tons of aggregate materials for every cubic meter of concrete. Additional benefits include reduced congestion and exhaust from traffic, less wear and tear on local roadways, and less disruption to local communities where concrete facilities operate throughout the Lower Mainland. We visited Lehigh Hansen's Granville Island facility, which is a great example of a concrete plant in a dense community utilizing water-based transportation of aggregates. Welcome to the Ocean Concrete Plant on Granville Island. We've been supplying concrete and aggregate materials from this site for just over a hundred years. Years ago when we first established our operations here on Granville Island, the entirety of the island was an industrial area. But over the years, the island has changed and we've tried to change with it, adjusting our operations to the tourist destination that Granville Island now is. A lot of people ask us why do we still operate uh, in such tight quarters in a downtown location. And one of the main reasons is it's good for our efficiencies and our travel times to our job sites so that we can provide a product to our customers in a very time sensitive manner. But one of the other benefits of that is it's more sustainable. And one of the things we do to limit our impact on the community where we do business is that we have this aggregate barge behind me. And this brings uh, aggregate to our, to our concrete plant from our aggregate mine in Seashelt, which is about 60 kilometers away. This barge holds 2,000 tons of aggregate. That's our sand, our gravel that we put into the concrete. And this plant produces about 130,000 cubic meters of concrete per year. That's 260,000 tons of aggregate. So that's 130 trips with the barge. If we were to bring that material by truck, at 35 tons per truck, it's almost 7,500 truck trips to get the same amount of material every year to this site. So by using marine transportation, we eliminate 7,500 truck trips off the roads in our community. That's one of the things we do to try and be a good neighbor and a good steward uh, where we do business. This is a great example of what the concrete industry is already doing to reduce its emissions and get us towards the goal of carbon neutral concrete. Thanks for watching.